Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Uh, I am Dr. Muhammad Kajib Shazli, International Radiologist and Diagnostic Radiologist. I am working in UAE, in Yaz Group of uh, Hospitals in Abu Dhabi. Uh, I was the uh, former chair of uh, uh, Radiology Department in the Hospital and Health Networks. So, uh, for the PGs and the young doctors, the young colleagues, even young radiology residents, this is very important point. What is the role of HRCT? Uh, is this a diagnostic tool for interstitial lung disease or uh, what is this? This is a very uh, pertinent question in the regard of HRCT. So my answer is there is no role of HRCT in diagnosis of every ILD. But actually it is only an imaging aid to clinical diagnosis. So the most important thing is the clinical diagnosis, the differential diagnosis made by the pulmonologist or the physician led by HRCT. So this is this should not be vice versa. We have done HRCT then followed by differential diagnosis. No. Sometimes it happens that a uh, physician has sent us a CT scan and we raise the concern that there is a suspected ILD. Then they started uh, working on it, but most of the time and majority of occasions, the, the stream should be very straight from pulmonologist, pulmonologist point of view, the, the differential diagnosis, the clinical query, and then radiologist, uh, HRCT and radiologist opinion. So this is an amazing uh, tool an imaging uh, aid to clinical diagnosis not the uh, this is the, this is not for the primary diagnostic diagnosis and uh, primary uh, discovery as far as the accuracy of hrct is concerned it is uh, 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 it has very high uh, um, uh, sensitive it, it it has a uh, uh, high sensitivity but low uh, specificity so uh, there is uh, uh, the specificity of the diagnosis of the new onset of IPF based on a thorough, uh, thorough HRCT features alone is very high, 97%. But the sensitivity is uh, 62. This is either way, sorry, I, I misinterpret the, the written words. So actually the specificity for fibrosis is very high, but the sensitivity is very less or acceptable uh, in within the acceptable range, range like 62 to 79 percent overall. So once there is fibrosis in, in lungs, the, the specificity of HRCT for the diagnosis is very high, but the sensitivity is low. So uh, the indications for HRCT is definitely the number one is the diffuse parenchymal lung disease. Number two, the abnormal chest X-ray and pulmonologist wants to discover more and uh, uh, wants to have a better idea what is going on in the lungs. Uh, chest X-ray finding not in keeping with clinical findings or uh, pulmonary function test. This is another uh, criteria for ordering of HRCT. And uh, uh, sometimes CT scan is also required for the guided biopsies. Radiation risk is uh, uh, very high in HRCT, and this is uh, not uh, the game of children. And uh, we always uh, think about, think twice and twice before uh, ordering uh, HRCT, because usually it takes uh, four times radiation dose as compared to normal CT scan without contrast. So HRCT gives more radiation uh, to have a more clear picture. So this is a trade-off. Uh, more radiation with clear image, relatively less radiation with uh, a relatively low quality image. So uh, HRCT gives more radiation as compared to conventional CT scan. So we have to be very careful always while we are ordering our. So the, so the, the follow-up uh, uh, there is no data available, no research article uh, in, in my knowledge, definitely I have very little knowledge, that actually uh, suggests how many months, years should be in between two HRCTs to save the patient that the, as a safety measure. So usually uh, it all depends on the clinical scenario of the patient and uh, uh, pulmonologists want it sometime within six months, sometime every year, but always keep in mind the radiation. Radiation it is equivalent to hundreds of chest X-rays. 
So a basic uh, functional unit or secondary pulmonary lobule, it contains one bronchiole, one central artery, uh, interstitium, and uh, within the uh, interlobular septum, there are uh, there is uh, extra lobular interstitium. Pulmonary yes. Each secondary pulmonary lobule it primary uh, uh, units and uh, the secondary pulmonary lobule is the smallest uh, unit in the lung which can be delineated clearly on HRCPT. So there are multiple SNI. They they make a secondary pulmonary nodule and secondary pulmonary nodule can only can we can see the secondary pulmonary nodule only and uh, we cannot see the SNI. So the, here is a, a depiction of the uh, boundaries and the structures of secondary pulmonary lobules. Here is a bronchiole, and it is accompanied by accompanied by uh, arteriole, the lymphatics within the interstitium, the boundaries, and within the boundaries there are venules, and there are also lymphatics outside the secondary pulmonary lobule. So this is the secondary pulmonary lobule, and uh, uh, HRCT can only resolve this boundary, okay? And whenever there are changes within the SNI or within the secondary pulmonary lobule, the HRCT cannot clearly depict these changes. That is why these changes appear as ground glass opacification. So. For example, if there is fluid with, within this interstitium or there is blood in this whole area within the secondary pulmonary lobule, the HRCT will depict this secondary pulmonary lobule as a ground glass nodule. Okay, because HRCT cannot show us these fine uh, internal structures. So the last boundary which HRCT can delineate is this outside boundary, okay? So this is a basic concept. So now come to the, uh, the, the important, another important point. Uh, embryologically, the, the interstitium is, is, is starting established from uh, peripheral to central, okay? So most of the time, whenever there are changes in the interstitium related to ILD, always these changes first start from the periphery of all lobes, especially the low lobe because the low lobe is much larger than the rest of the lung lobes. So keep in mind, keeping in this mind, we should always start searching for ILD from peripheral and lower. Yeah, means from low lobes and the peripheries of low lobes and peripheries of other lobes as well because of the embryological reason. And most of the time, the interstitial parenchymal lung disease, they involve this central area or parahyalur area in late stages. Whereas the, the diseases which involve uh, airways and the diseases which involve, uh, which, which have uh, infective etiology, they most of the time start from this parahyalur region and they go, they go from central to Peripheral. So this is a basic uh, concept we should always keep in mind while seeing the HRCT. Plus HRCT, uh, if there is ILD, most of the time it's bilateral, and infection most of it uh, most of the time it's unilateral. So th these are some important points. So come to the interstitium. There are four types of interstitium: bronchovascular interst interstitium surrounding the bronchovas bronchi, bronchi and vessels. This is thick uh, bands. These are the thick bands. The central lobule, lobular interstitium with, uh, within the secondary pulmonary lobule, interlobular septal interstitium between the two lobules, uh, two secondary pulmonary lobules, and pleural interstitium along the pleura. So these four interstitium are important, but all of these are well established in the peripheries as compared to parahyalur regions. So now uh, I will move forward a little bit. 
So now come to the patterns in HRCT. Uh, if uh, we recognize the pattern, we can reach to the diagnosis. There are certain patterns, classic patterns. Uh, we need to understand the ground glass, the consolidation, mosaic pattern, nodular pattern, linear pattern, reticular pattern, and cystic pattern. All these we can see either in a single disease or uh, these uh, we can also see uh, these pattern in different diseases, in different occasions. And sometimes like in uh, some diseases like sarcoidosis, they can show any of these patterns. And like uh, 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 some other diseases like uh, 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 and the disease, infective disease like tuberculosis with the endobronchial spread, they give classic nodular appearance green, but some diseases which, uh, which uh, uh, involve uh, from the very beginning, they involve the interstitium like uh, UIP or NSIP, they can start with the, uh, the ground glass appearance and then converting into the reticular pattern, then uh, the, the cystic pattern and so on. So, we can see all patterns in a single disease or some patterns or some of these patterns are very specific for some specific disease. Like uh, we call, this, uh, call it uh, cravy paving. Cravy paving is very specific for uh, certain diseases. Okay, Like sarcoidosis, we can see the cra cravy pa paving and other disease. We will see in the next slides. So ground glass haze is uh, one of the most famous uh, pattern of uh, HRCT, but it has very low sense, uh, very high sensitivity, but very low specificity. So, if there is ground glass haze, it doesn't mean means we have diagnosed a, uh, a disease. It means there is something going on that cannot be resolved by the HRCT. So, either this could be a fluid, this could be hemorrhage, this could be infiltration, and etc. So, definitely there is something, but what is this? we cannot say. So seeing ground glass opacification means there is something definitely. But what is this? Nobody knows. So we can see ground glass opacification in edema, ARDS, viral pneumonias, bacterial pneumonias, hypersensitivity, pneumonitis, pulmonary hemorrhages, diffuse interstitial primal lung disease, etc. So here we can see the ground glass opacification. And ground glass opacification is very characteristic. And if uh, you will see like 20, 30 cases, you will easily identify what is the different be difference between normal parenchyma and the ground glass opacification. Consolidation, uh, pulmonologists, they uh, much better know uh, as compared to radiologists. Consolidation is, uh, uh, is a uh, fluid filled uh, lung segment with air bronchogram. So this is a very frequent appearance on chest X-rays and uh, as well as uh, on HRCT. So we can find different types of consolidations. Compare the ground glass opacification with the uh, consolidation. In consolidation, the patch is white with air bronchogram, whereas in the ground glass opacification, the haze is uh, relatively gray with the preserved internal vasculature and airways. Mosaic perfusion is uh, a very confusing and uh, very important to diagnose. This is actually uh, an area where the blood vessels are low as compared to the normal, or this is an area where uh, uh, the air has been trapped due to uh, micro airway disease. So either of case, <clears throat> we can say the mosaic pattern like air trapping with low vascularity or uh, low vascularity due to microvascular disease. Both of these patterns, we can say this is mosaic pattern. The characteristic feature is the lack of vasculature in the area in an area which appears more hazy as compared to adjacent parenchyma. So this is mosaic pattern, and it can be uh, seen in uh, microairway disease. It can be seen in microvascular disease. So here we ca can compare the case of mosaic pattern with no internal or very low internal vascularity, whereas in ground glass, the vascularity and the inside bronchioles are well preserved. So this is the difference. Nodular pattern is very famous, and we know there are different types of nodular pattern, like 
the milvi pattern the micronodularity the uh, the scattered nodularity etc so there are common causes of nodules pain bird appearance very famous now come to the last two points the linear abnormality or linear pattern they usually appears due to engorged uh, uh, interlobular septa or engorged peribronchovascular septa uh, peribronchovascular interstitium and most of the time uh, it appears in the uh, it appears from central to peripheral and uh, sometimes from peripheral to center like uh, curly uh, like curly line b curly line a curly line c all the linear patterns so we can see here the linear pattern very clearly here we can see the linear pattern now come to the reticulation reticulation uh, is actually the depiction of ongoing fibrosis there are two types of reticulations the fine reticulation and the coarse reticulation as the disease advances uh, the reticulation become more coarse and uh, keep in mind it, these these reticulation always start from the periphery from peripheral to central from lower zones to upper zones okay the, these are cystic parenchymal changes secondary to pulmonary fibrosis and cystic changes we all know there are multiple type, multiple type of sets i hope this presentation all, although uh, i was giving uh, 15 minutes i, I have taken uh, 2 3 min minutes more so it will uh, help you in future diagnosis and uh, the the message take home messages keep always good friendship with radiologists if you want to diagnose your patients accurate and timely thank you very much